Hello there, Internet Mogwa here, and I got another just of room terror video for you guys today. That was decent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I've had like, I haven't uploaded in like a few days, right? Uh, I did post a video yesterday, but yeah, I I can feel the rust already in that sense. But don't worry. We're back at it with daily uploads. Yes, daily. D word. Daily. Dairy? No, daily. Is what I mean. I want to be clear about it since so many people get angry on Reddit whenever I say daily. In fact, I've been accused of false advertising because I say daily uploads, but every now and then I take a break from the game for whatever reason. Maybe the meta being stale or maybe some other personal reason within my life. And, you know, you can't have that. You can't say daily and then not do that, right? I get it. So in response, after some, you know, hard thought and meditation about it, uh, I've decided to just spam the word more than ever. You know, in fact, when I miss an upload, the next day, I can guarantee you, you'll have at least 40 mentions of daily videos in the video. And then we'll tone it down a little bit for the next one, but we'll still keep it relevant. Yeah. I have a rich attitude, as you guys can see. You know what's also rich? This deck, as we're gonna showcase Treasure Hunt, which is a new take on the Treasure Deep archetype. And the reason why we're revisiting this again so early on is because, honestly, I'm not happy with the prior version that I showcased a while back because, in reality, that deck ultimately was kind of like a... a a deck trying to be two things at once, right? Like an actual deep deck and a treasure deck. Which, after, you know, thinking about it for a while and experimenting with different ideas, I realized that it's just not a compatible thing. What cards like Sea Scarab and uh, the likes of, uh, obviously, Lost Riches have provided the deep archetype is the ability to diversify. Now, we can finally say that there is potentially more than one deep deck in the meta. And that is because if you wanna build a deck list around Lost Riches that really benefits from it and uses it properly, it may be a good idea to try to focus more on the treasure aspect of the deck and not so much on just having a regular deep curve. There's a lot of things in this deck that are very similar or make it very similar rather to a standard deep deck. But the reality is at the same time, it's very different. As you guys can see, we're not playing cards like Slaughter Docks. We're not playing the likes of Salvage and we're not playing the Abyssal Eye either. Instead, we're running Shipwreck Quarters as our top end sea monster. And we're still running the Atrocity uh, as a two of because I do believe this card is too good not to play in any Nautilus deck ever. <laughs> so uh, we are still playing that, but we have a very different sort of like play pattern, especially in the early to mid game, right? So we're trying to benefit from Sea Scarab. Sea Scarab got a massive buff, one of the biggest buffs in the patch actually. Going from a 1-2 to a 2-3 as a 2 drop is just insane. So this card can actually trade into one drops uh, and trade evenly into some two drops now and uh, is more resilient, which means that we will be able to rely on it more as an engine and an engine that we have geared ourselves towards with this deck. You know, when it comes to reaching deep, this deck does so very easily. But if we do find a card like Lost Riches early on, our focus shifts from going deep into finding treasures. The design behind this deck, the reasoning behind all the distributions and everything behind this list is we want to be playing either Treasure Trove or Plate Worm Egg by turn four or five. Turn four is like the nuts, right? Very unlikely, but it could potentially happen. Turn five is more likely. So how, how does this happen? Well, initially, we the first couple of turns, we either play a one drop or we don't do much at all. We can't set up the Sea Scarab, but it depends on the scenario because what we want to do is we want to reach turn three with Spell Mana Backup and we want to go for Lost Riches. And then afterwards, we can play Dread Dredgers, we can play our Jettisons, and we can start dropping our other toss units like Dead Bloom Wander. Uh, we also have the Blighted Caretaker to synergize with the Sea Scarab so that if we set up the Sea Scarab early on, then uh, our one drop like Hapless Instagram or Dread, Dread Dredgers or maybe a Spiderling, we can sack with Blighted Caretaker and we 
translate that into three potential deaths on our end. The one generated by Bladder Caretaker and the two incoming deaths from the Ephemeral Saplings with Challenger. So this makes it so that we can trigger the likes of Sea Scarab three times with Blighter Caretaker alone. And that uh, is very important, actually, because we want to be tossing really quickly with this build because we want to be fishing for the treasure. I really like how this deck plays out. Like, I, I like the fact that, you know, you set up the lost riches early on and then you just spend the game trying to find that treasure. It's actually, uh, I can feel the dopamine building up in my brain. <laughs> I don't know how healthy this deck is, uh, but it, it's fun. Like, I can guarantee you that it is fun as hell. It, it could be pretty ridiculous sometimes in fact even infuriating because i like in today's video you're gonna see some rolls that i get with a treasure trove that are just like crazy but to be fair you know it is kind of it is a bit of karma right we are playing the most hearthstone deck in laser of Runeterra with this just want to let you know maybe target speak can try to compete a little bit but man i don't know a treasure trove is a pretty crazy it's a dumb card sometimes like when i when i pulled i didn't do it on the video but when i pulled field the rush oh my lord that was, nah, that was glorious who am i kidding regardless uh we still run the devourer of the deaths in the deck it is the best sea monster and it goes in absolutely every deck with nautilus i was even debating about not playing nautilus in this variant but i really do want to solidify the treasure archetype and i want to run the shipwreck quarter and by playing nautilus we can potentially play three mana shipwreck quarters in the late game which can allow us to keep our mana open for other plays maybe react plays like vengeance which i still feel is very key for a deck like this to give us a little bit of control and make sure that we don't die to one unit that just gets out of control and uh we can also uh, save up the mana for our treasures as well as we try to you know uh, find them and then have that five mana ready for them and ladies and gentlemen boys and girls dogs and cats fish that is the deck list right there very fun to play uh, regarding my initial rant in the video just I i'm gonna end this deck tech by saying I just like to have fun in my videos. Um, I'm a very emotional person. I go both ways. I'm swingy. And a lot of times I'm just not really being serious. If that, I mean, that makes sense, right? So, because I've seen that lately, you know, because of the fact that we endured such a long, tough metagame with Twisted Fate Fizz and my issues with Targan, I've, I've, I've been seeing like a certain amount of, you know, a relevant amount of negativity being built up towards me. Uh, because of my attitude in general. And I'm just going to say that I'm, I'm not going to change anything, you know. Uh, I never intended to be liked by everybody. I don't think that's possible, and especially not for someone like me. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep doing my thing. Don't get too offended. Just just don't take things so seriously. If, if, if this reaches out to somebody and, and makes a difference, then it'll be worth it. And uh, that's where I'll leave it at. Just, you know, enjoy life. Don't Don't get angry so easily. <laughs> That's so cute coming from me. And I'm going to stop preaching. Us all day. Stay tuned for daily Legends of Runeterra content. And I'll be back at it tomorrow. <clears throat> all right, here we go. Let's hunt some treasures, shall we? As we're facing big boys with Overwhelm, the deck. Pretty much it. We're going to mulligan these three away. We're going to keep the Jettison because generally we do. With this deck, we aim to reach deep and level up Nautilus. But it's also important to have Yedison in case... Because we do want to mulligan relatively aggressively for Lost Riches, right? As we want to work for potential early game treasures. Well, early to mid, I'd say. All right. Now we go for Lost Riches. The trap is set. As we have Yetison. Which we, as you guys can see, we can utilize here. Especially if our opponent tries to, yeah. Because there, we're going to go with Yetison because there is a, a pretty strong chance. No, not a strong chance. There's a higher chance by getting the treasure with this. And we could get the deal 5 to everything, right? Good enough. Good enough. Booyah. <laughs> Have three five fives, baby. I mean, we can still get exhausted and lose one of them, but... Still... <laughs> I 
How's that for game one? <laughs> oh my god, dude. Maybe this is the deck. I will do some clapping. I haven't played like in four to five days. So, yeah, I thought I was in Diamond 3, not in Diamond 4. That's kind of a, you know, disappointing. But I think, I think now's the time to actually make the push for Masters. I'll be doing that. Uh, before, actually, let, let's see what we got here. Oh, good, a champion card, a.k.a. a wall card. Because I have too many shards. First world problems. Where are you at? Okay. Round two. Okay, this, this man, or woman, or organism, earned my respect. We're gonna drop the atrocity. We're gonna keep everything else. Even though loss and riches is, uh, or can be a bit of a priority, we won't deny, or say no, rather, to Dread Dredgers and to see Scarab with the Edison backup like this. This kind of opener can lead to an early uh, deep status. So we're gonna lead off with the Dread Dredgers just because, you know, he's been buffed, right? He's got that nice biceps somewhere in there and uh, he's got two power. So we wouldn't be making use of that body from his earliest turn one instead of, because there is an argument for holding our toss enablers, right? I'm actually going to... Um... Yeah, Lulu Jarvin, that's a, that's a neat concept. I'm actually here. Nobody cares. And now we play the Sea Scarab. This is why we didn't attack with Dread Dredgers earlier on, because we want to make use of our engine here. And now... I'm gonna play the Hapless Aristocrat to give me another chum blocker. We're gonna carry over the spell mana for stalking shadows. As uh, we don't have a reason to rush into our tossing, as we can always hope for. Okay, so Bannerman is inside. I do want to play the Maokai here. The Blessed Isles live through me. 29, Maokai at 3, okay. I mean, Bannerman with Lulu feels a little bit redundant, though, no? Okay, so he's actually going for Maokai. That's, and, and that's fine, because, like I said, I, I don't need the, I mean, this Maokai would be, would be neat, but I really, really value this, this uh, Scarab. We block with you here. That is that two lost riches already? Oh, that 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 makes me sad. Well, that's a scary board. Not much we can do about it either. We just didn't draw into like much relevant stuff here. I mean, I I, I would be surprised to see the. I still do feel like like Bannerman is redundant with Lulu, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it isn't. Like it is a little bit, but maybe maybe not to the point where it it really. Should warrant you not playing it. She doesn't feel like the most imaginative Lulu deck in my opinion, but because there are more cute, cool usages out of her. But it's nice to see these two champions together. Uh, we don't see Jarvan. 
early on. We're going to block into you because he's going to be able to level up Jarvan anyways. And um, we have no other plays, unfortunately. Twenty. This is an easy, so I don't have to focus so much on that anymore. I think I'll take the blighted caretaker at this point. I mean, Sea Scarab will become a five-six that will continue to toss for us. I think that may be better than blighted caretaker. If he has something like a Relentless Pursuit, anything that rallies here, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention that, but we're, we're dead. <laughs> like, even even with the combination of, of Horny Toad here, he can still, he has two challengers, which means he can always, uh, I guess he must have had some, oh, he just didn't have enough space. He had a Jarvis, he just didn't have enough space. <laughs> well, that's a bit of a miscalculation. Oh boy. These two are ephemeral though is the issue. The march. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how we ever I don't know how we ever survive here. He he gets the barrier anyway, so there's not Lost in riches, I cry every time. Forward, forward. I can force a trade here. I can actually do more than that. This is the last chance. The, water the plan is very simple. We hope he doesn't block into the Sea Scarab, so we set him up at Atrocity Lethal. I attacked in the wrong order again. I, I, have, the, I have a tendency of putting the, uh, the Ephemeral in front. I mean, in this case, it doesn't matter because my Nautilus isn't dying. But you can tell my opponent is no fool. And uh, does not have to take any damage whatsoever. Which means that we're dead. Especially considering how easily he's able to refill the board there. Oh boy, maybe he doesn't open attack and um, yeah, I, I don't know. I would need like two turns to set up these two. We have an Autolus uh, Riptide. We have an Atrocity that can allow us to hit, for example, you and you and we still die, right? Yeah, we still die. GG. I cry every time. We got bodied. By Lulu Jarvan. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, this deck is like th that's the problem with this deck, right? It, we're we're hunting for treasure, so when we don't even get the treasure hunt begun, it could be tough. It's also like a very very scary matchup. Like any sort of Demacia deck with potential rally effects and the ability to go very wide but not be super frail at the same time. We need to like hunt for our treasures. We do have answers for decks like that. Like if, if we get our loss in riches early on and we're able to toss to it, we can pick up uh, stuff like the, uh, the cannon treasure, as I like to call it. The one that deals five damage to all units. Stuff like that allows us to board wipe super easily, right? But the downside of a deck like this, as fun as it is, is that, I mean, I think Ultimately, for the greater good, it's not as consistent. <laughs> I, I think it would be a bit of a problem if it was as consistent. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but there are some like very Hearthstone elements to this deck. So uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't want to say anything, uh, only to be called out as a hypocrite later in the line. So I'm just gonna shut up. Regardless, let's see if we can redeem ourselves after getting whooped by Lulu Jarvan. I didn't imagine myself saying that. And let's go into round three. Okay, Shivana, with that new Fury. It's what she should have been from the get-go, like, 
know, it's one of the cases where sometimes, you know, if a thematic limitation on a card is nothing but a negative thing, then just fuck thematics. Hashtag fuck thematics. We are gonna, we could be keeping Thorny Toad, but I'm gonna do a full mulligan, man. I want my riches. I want my riches. God fucking damn it. Don't toss me a loss in riches. I swear to God. Okay. Man, atrocity always hurts to see, but that's two other, um... Well, Dragon Chow is putting in the work there, like you can actually allow him to... I am 100% going to Vile Feast this. Never again will be vaulted dragon fire. Don't let them through! That trade was gonna happen anyway, so I'd rather it happen before he has mana to utilize combat tricks for. Mm -hmm. For one mana, there's no vulnerable or anything, right? So let's just drop you. The blessed isles live through me. I can take this hit. No. No need. We're a loss in riches. Nice. So we get that sweet treasure. And talk about timing too. Like treasure trove is exactly the kind of shit that I want to see at this stage of the game. Especially because we're not quite there when it comes to deep. So the plate worms may be, it may be a bit too early for them. I can't really challenge Shivana though. Because it'll level her up. Unless he just soon combats. Witness my true power. Alright. Anything we can do to weaken it? This is a lost in riches. I'm gonna go with the treasure trove. Show me the money! Show me the money! Oh, that sucks. Oh my god. Oh my. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? Oh. Oh man, oh my, oh, I, 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 I wanna puke. I wanna puke. Right now, I just wanna vomit. I just wanna vomit. Are you fucking serious? Next turn I'll have 17. Is that enough? That's enough. 
Wow. <laughs> wow. I guess we're dead. OTK'd. I couldn't really do much. Like, uh, at this point with this developed... Like, I, I really... That's the first time I play a treasure trove and I, I literally get nothing. Like, actual nothing. Which is why it's safe to say that a deck like this is never gonna be tier 1, just because of lack of consistency issues. Yeah. If I play this, I still have one more mana, which technically... We go deep, and we die. <laughs> I okay. That game went fine, except for the fact that we pulled a trove that actually gave us nothing. One could argue that you should play trove with at least one unit on the board, but yeah, that was just the. Uh, that was like actually the worst treasure trove I've ever pulled, like by far. And of course it happens on camera, so... Yeah, let's see if we actually have a good trove. If we actually find a, a proper... I, I'm not even gonna call that a treasure, man. What the fuck? That's not a treasure. It's anything but a treasure. God damn it. Okay, YouTube Aatrox bot. Is that like a, like a channel? Or a YouTube bot? Or what is that? Through my experience, having a name like this is just gonna invite a shitload of people trying to uh, stream snipe you. So whenever you queue into somebody, they're gonna take like, you know, 10 to 15 seconds without doing anything turn one. And you wonder what's happening, and you know, they're searching for your thing. And this guy's gonna happen, like, that's gonna happen to him like every one to three games. One out of three games, English. Uh, I'm gonna keep the rest, should I keep the stalking shadows? I feel like I should. Again, I, I do like to fish for lost and riches, but I don't like sacrificing good early game for it. Give me the stuff. Stuff happy. <laughs> yeah, attack. Because we want to make use of, of this stat line, right? Because if we set up for an atrocity lethal, any ounce of damage goes a long way. A bit of a premature tower keeper. There in the mountains. <laughs> ah, there we go. Bed a bed him. Bed a bed him. Bed a I'm gonna attack with everything. That's a nice shirt. All right. I will bury the world in ice. Very important. No no threat of ruination next turn. And that matters a whole lot. Close.
I gotta start, like, dropping the load on my hand. We gotta go deep. Can we go deep? Maybe, maybe we can. One, two, three, four. Maybe there's something that Treasure Trove can give us. All right, will we get a proper one? <laughs> Come on, I don't want to jinx it, man. I don't, I don't even want to look. I don't even want to look at this point. Oh shit, this draws us a card. And I can also use it to trigger, like, to, to help level up Maokai by killing the Aristocrat, right? This gives me another one in hand, that's hilarious. Yeah, this is pretty useless. And now we go deep. I'm gonna vile feast first. He knows the threat of atrocity is real. So I'm gonna play some mind games with him. <laughs> if I have atrocity, you lose, dude. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna double eliminate that. Two, two, and then. Oh yeah, yeah, you laughing? You laughing? Get flexed on, bitch! Get flexed on, bitch! <laughs> Get knocked the fuck out! Oh, I felt good! Oh, with the emoting! 
Get him, bearers, boy! Alright, next round. Okay, some good old pirate burn. We do have uh, the means, like, we have the early game to try to withstand this. I, I do, I'm gonna drop the Stalking Shadows. I'm gonna keep the Lost Riches and the Dead Bloom Wander. This is not the greatest matchup to have Lost Riches in, but then again, I can pull some cra some crazy shit. And with double jettison, I feel I feel good about that. The problem is, um, yeah, the problem is the early game. That's good. I have my orders. If I play this next turn, I can play that in there. I'm gonna play the Dead Bloom Wanderer. A uh, Horny Toad here will also be very important, keeping us alive. Yeah. Great. Where's my axe? Let's go for the Edison. Okay, there we go. Show me the money. Show me the money. Show me the money. Show me the money. <laughs> okay. Tap to have some fun, boys. Is there anything that would benefit, like... Nah. Let's go with that Decimate. Let's, let's give him a, a little bit of his own medicine, you know? Set the bam, 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 bam. I don't think I need to rummage. I mean, this could help me, but I, I already achieve. The problem is, I can't. If I draw two, I'm. Yeah. All right, horny toad. I believe in you. I'll do better this time.
We gotta force the trade into this, and we gotta force trades into these two. He's low. Atrocity kills him. But we don't have Atrocity. We're still at 10 though. We're still at a respectable amount of health. And we have a, a 2 mana Devourer that that's here. Um, how are you looking at Maokai? Okay, you're looking decent. We also got these um, these Shipwreck Hoarders as well. I have Right now I have a total of 10 mana. 10 mana, which means I... I can potentially even double recorder here, but the the idea is I could try to fish. Ready. All right. Do you hear the call? Does he have access to all? Love ya. We gotta keep this vengeance in case my opponent has something like a, a Noxian Fervor. Out of, my way. Out of my way! Okay, so that's how it is. Alright. Down, down. Ba -da -ba -da -da -ba -ba -da -ba -da. I could play the Devour of the Deaths to get rid of this, but... I believe in the treasure, even though we've had mixed results today. I shall keep my optimal. What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> that was terrible. I have to look back, but I, I think I got a take heart. I got, I got a six six. Did I get a spectral matron? I mean, I got a spectral. What can I even do with a spectral matron? I mean, I could play Maokai. But can I even level up Maokai at them? I don't even know, man. I mean, I, I didn't play the Yedison prior, so I'd have to check how far away Maokai was from leveling up because maybe there was a way to set it up, man, but that, that felt awful. But sometimes you just you just need the power play and the opponent will cry uncle before they even see the shit you got. And that's gonna do it for me for a video. I've been getting much better pulls in general uh, off camera, like, uh, Feel the rush, you know, and other crazy batshit things, English. But for the most part, you know, very happy with today's session. We got a, a lot of diversity in regards to games, and uh, we also have a <laughs> diversity in regards to results and luck as well. But this is just a really good fun deck to play, man. It's it's something that I really recommend if you're looking for something to just mess around with and something that can actually snowball and, and, and give you some crazy stuff, right? Bring out the Hearthstone within you, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, regardless, that's that's basically it. That's all I gotta say for today. Um, I have, you know, the deck is still prone to some p potential tweaks here and there. Depending on the meta, you can make it more anti-aggro and stuff. Uh, I still do believe in stuff like Blighted Caretaker alongside Sea Scarab, but I haven't been able to really showcase it as, uh, as well as I would like in and off camera. So I, I, this, this deck is still, it could be optimized, right? But it feels like a very promising meme archetype, if, if, if we're going to leave it like that. It's just really fun. That's all there is to it. And that's where I'm going to end this video. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for regular daily... Blah, regular daily... Regular Legends of Runeterra content. I can't say the D word anymore because people on Reddit get angry. So yeah, well, thank you. Hope you enjoyed the video. This whole day. Play some deep. I'll see you tomorrow.